Hello viewers, thank you once again for tuning in and I'm your host, none other than Mr. Spotter Fred. Friends, we want to continue doing what we like doing most. Now, what we have been doing is accounting for us as celebrities, right? We have been talking about accounting, accounting for assets, for assets and liabilities. In that regard, we have been looking at A, we talked about the IFRS 5. Then B, we talked about IS 8. Then C, we talked about IS 10. D, we talked about IS, uh, we want to talk about IS 12. Then E, we mentioned the IS 17, which is to be changed to IFRS 16 by 2019. Then F, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, IS 20 government grants. And G, we are talking about IS 23. Then H, we have IS 37. And uh, HI, we have the IS 32. IS 39, IFRS 7 and 9. Then J, we have the IS 40. These are the items we have been talking about. This one is non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. This one is the uh, errors, you know, these are accounting policies, uh, accounting estimates and errors. This one is events after the reporting date. Now we want to look at this one. This is in respect to taxes. We want to talk about taxes now. Then we'll talk about IS-17. So today we want to look at uh, IS-12. This is now accounting for, accounting, accounting for taxes. Accounting for taxes. Now friends, uh, according to IS-12, Paragraph 1, the objective of IS-12 is to prescribe. The objective of this standard is to prescribe the accounting for, you know, the objective. Objective, objective, to prescribe, to prescribe accounting, accounting treatment, accounting treatment, accounting treatment for taxes for taxes. This is uh, in respect to IS 12, paragraph 1, right? This is paragraph 1 and to paragraph 2. So it talks about the prescription. Why do we need is the objective. Why do we need IS 12 or how do we use it? So it's mainly meant for prescribing the accounting treatment for taxes. Friends, to achieve this objective, it's inherent that in the recognition of an asset or liability that the asset or liability will be recovered or settled. An entity should account for taxes, consequences of transactions and other events in the same way it accounts for the transactions or other events themselves. Friends, when we come to IS-12, we normally use, we normally use um, uh, in respect to IS-12, IS-12 requires, requires the use, the use of um, balance sheet, balance sheet, balance sheet approach. The balance sheet approach or the recognition approach where, 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 where. Taxes, taxes where, where defer tax, where defer tax, where defer tax will be, will be, will be determined, will be determined based on, based on assets, assets and liabilities, assets and liabilities. Now, there are two types of taxes that we'll be talking about. So two types of taxes 
that we'll be talking about here. One, there is the current tax. The current tax. And two, there is the deferred, there is the deferred tax. There is the deferred tax. We need to look at the current tax expense, expense and liability. We also need to look at the, the deferred tax expense, stroke income, and asset, stroke liability. So we want to look at the, the current tax. How do we recognize the current tax? And how do we recognize or account for deferred tax? Current tax is in respect to paragraph 5 to 10. It's very straightforward. But we may have the other paragraphs talking about mainly the deferred tax. So we talk about current tax. Accounting for current tax. Current tax is all, all honestly very straightforward. That to determine the current tax, the current tax expense, current tax expense, expense is simply the tax rate. Is the tax rate, you multiply the taxable, the taxable profit. In other words, friends, the current tax are those taxes that are, are assessed on taxable profits. What are these taxable profits? These are simply the accounting profit before tax adjusted with the allowable and disallowable items. So we come and say that uh, uh, when we talk of taxable profits, taxable profits, talk of taxable profits, you take the tax, uh, sorry, no, the tax rate, but we talk about the accounting, the accounting, the accounting profits, the accounting profits before, before tax, the accounting profit before taxes. You add back the disallowables, the disallowables, and then you subtract the allowables. You know, according to the income tax department, there are some expenses which are recognized by the accountant, but in reality, they are not allowed for tax purposes. Those are disallowable expenses. The Income Tax Department or the Income Tax Act does not recognize them as expenses that should reduce profits. No. Instead, they are added back. But according to the Income Tax uh, Act as well, we have the allowable expenses. We have those expenses which may not have been recognized by an accountant, but they should be recognized. They should be reducing the profits for tax purposes. So those are the disallowable and the allowable items. Fine. Now, as we must have said, for uh, when it comes to accounting, when it comes to accounting for current tax, for current taxes, for current taxes, one, one, with the recognition, with the recognition, with the recognition, with the recognition of current tax, of current tax expense, of current tax expense, we are going to debit. We debit our profit or loss account. Profit or loss account with the expense, then we credit our current tax expense, our current tax, uh, uh, current tax expense account. Our current tax account. That's what you should do. Now, friends, apart from that, we should remember that uh, at the end of the day, there may be a balance. There will be a balance carried down in our current tax account. That balance at the end of the uh, current tax account should be reported in our statement of financial report. But before that, before that, we may also recognize the amount paid. And in most cases in corporations, you know, we pay tax in installments. So with the amount, with the amount, with the amount, with the amount paid, with the amount paid, maybe the installment for that period, we are going to debit the current tax account, the current tax account, and then we credit the bank, the bank account. This is what happens. So we recognize the expense, then we also recognize the amount paid. Now, we should remember that the balance in that current tax account, as we have said, will be an asset or a liability, and in most cases it's a liability. So I'll come and maybe demonstrate that one here. Let me demonstrate that here. If, for example, 
you are required to open a current tax account. If you are required to open a current tax account, this is how it could happen. Current tax account. If you are required to have a current tax account, then maybe you have a balance at the beginning of the period. That's a liability. Then we have uh, what we have reported to the profit or loss account is the expense. Then we have uh, the amount we have paid, you know, we may have made some payments. That's exactly what we do. Then the balance carried down here is what you take to your statement of financial position, to the statement of financial position. Remember, this one, as we must have said, let me use this and say, this item is this one, or rather, let me just extend this and say, and instead say, this item, this item, this is a current, a current tax liability, the current tax liability. And we should remember that note, A, the balance, balance carried down, the balance carried down or forward is the unpaid, is the unpaid current tax, current tax for the year, for the year, and should be, should be reported, should be reported or disclosed, or disclosed in the statement, in the statement of financial position as a current, as a current liability, as a current liability. That's very important that this balance need to be reported in the statement of financial position as a current liability. But as well, we may also have what we have as an over, over or under, under, under provision, under provision, under provision of tax, under provision of tax expense. Sometimes an entity may under provide or over provide. If they are not provided in the previous period, then this current period it should be recognized as an expense. If they over provided for in the previous period, then in the current period it should offset or rather reduce the tax expense or tax liability in the current period. <laughs>